Have you ever told God the reality of your pain and he wasn't interested in your pain because he was there to describe your future? God doesn't even deal with Elijah's pain. God said, I've come to tell you about your tomorrow. Your next week. Your next year. And what I'm going to do. God said, you're worried about, you're worried about Jezebel and Ahab. I've already, I've already planned that. I've already planned their situation. They're already taken care of. But I want you to get up and I want you to go anoint your future. My sermon today is go anoint your future. My God, I'll say it again. Go anoint your future. What you pray over, what you speak over, what you speak to. You are living the very words you have spoken in your life to this point right now. Maybe we need to change our words and begin to anoint our future with our words, our prayers, and put the oil of gladness on us and joy and go forth in anointing our future. So God tells him, shut up. Yes. And here's what God says. You say you're the only one? This is what God says, and I didn't read this to you last week. I was saving for this week. And God said, get up. Get out of this cave. And I want you to go back to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest unto Haziel, the king of Syria, I want you to anoint him. My goodness. Anoint Haziel, the king of Syria. We're going to find out what he, these, these three anointings he did. We're going to find out what these three anointings did in his future. Oh, this is the good part. He anoints his future with power and authority and the power of God coming against his enemies. And these three men he anoints are going to slay every one of his enemies. Can I get an amen there? My God, you don't need to worry about it. I'm going to anoint people that are going to take your enemies out for you. He went and anointed his future. Ooh, hallelujah. I need some charismatic Holy Ghost people in here today. And he said, I want you to go anoint another king. He said, I'm going to take you out of caves. I'm going to take you to kings. And I'm going to anoint men that are going to do amazing things in the kingdom. And they are going to fight your enemies for you. The battle is not yours. It belongs unto the Lord, the word says. He said, I want you to go anoint Jehu, the son of Nimshi. And thou shalt be king over Israel. And Elisha, ooh, then he said, I want you to go anoint Elisha. My God, can you imagine being the one that anointed Elisha? And then God tells him the truth about his complaint, I'm the only one. Say it with me, I'm the only one, Lord. No, say it, say it like you're in despair. I'm the only one, Lord. <laughs> like you're in your bedroom, I'm the only one, Lord. I know none of you have ever done that. I've been in the church long enough, I've seen it at the altar. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Haziel and Jehu, he said, I want you to slay them. And him that escapeth the sword of Jehu shall Elijah, Elisha slay. And then God says, I'll tell you what, I've got a plan for all your enemies that have come against you that want to kill you. I'm going to take care of them. And then he says, and by the way, you're not the only one that has served me that has not bowed down to Baal, that has not kissed the golden ring. He says, there are 7,000 people in Israel that have not bowed down to Baal, that not kissed the ring. They are serving me. And God said, you are 7,001, dude. So get out of the cave. Amen. Amen. Be careful on your complaints to God, because he may bear fact of truth to you. I'm serious. Lord, I'm the only one. And so God tells him, that number 7,000 is an interesting number. I don't have time to go in there. But God numbered them exactly of those that had not bailed to bow. He said it's 7,000. It's not 7,005, not 699.9. It is 7,000 even, including you. Say, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm the one. Yet I have left me yet 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which had not kissed him. My God, can you imagine that complaint now? I'm the only one. And God said, you're 7,001. <laughs> Be careful what you tell God. He might correct you with truth. Amen? Yeah. One amen there. Hallelujah. Thank you, honey. I'll take care of that after service. Praise God. Where do you want to eat? So God had given... Elijah, very explicit instructions. He said, I want you to go anoint two kings, and they're going to bless your life. And I want you to go anoint this little guy named Elisha, and he's really going to bless your life, and he's going to bless the nation of Israel. And he said, they are going to anoint and grace your future. 
God told Elijah, go anoint your future. Let me tell you what happens when you anoint your future. When you anoint your future in God, directed by God, you have His Word, His promise, and His protection on your life. Hallelujah. So Solomon says, without a vision, people perish. I, Elijah, have you lost your vision? And the reality is we need to talk to our future. We need to speak to our future. God tells him, go anoint your future. Now, I don't believe anybody in this room is, has a more of a desire to become all that God has for you to be. I believe everybody in this room has a desire to be all that God has charged you to be. Is that true in your heart that you would like to be all that God has for you? To maximize the potential that God has put in you. To maximize his promise. And so we're talking about how to live your future, and, and we need to understand that. Most of us think that's, that's far away, but that's not. Say, my future's tomorrow. My future's tomorrow. Your, your future is next week. Your future is next month. Then we're not talking about 10 years from now. Yes, that's part of your future, but you need to begin to believe every day is a gift for God, and you need to live like every day is a gift for God, and understand tomorrow is my future, and I'm going to live it to the utmost to the Most High God. That's what you need to begin to live about your future. Not 20, 30 years from now. What are you going to do tomorrow for God? Most people don't know how to live their future because their greatest threat to your future is always your past. And Solomon tells us without a vision, the people perish. And you're either prospering or perishing. Do you know that? Okay, let me put it this way. Thank you, Jim. Beloved, I pray above all things, not I wish, I pray above all things that thou would prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Guess who wrote that? Who wrote that? John the Revelator, the same guy that wrote Revelations, wrote that scripture right there. So don't throw no prosperity gospel at me, that that's the gospel of prosperity and propensity. It's not. It's written by the same man, anointed by the same Holy Spirit. That is God's heart and desire for you, that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Do you believe it? Say amen. amen. If you don't believe it, I'll show you where it is in scripture, and I'll let you study it for two weeks and come back and see if it's in God's word. I'm amazing people that want to take out certain parts of God's word. In fact, a, a very famous Christian study group says that 90% of Christians say they know they are not doing all that God has called them to do. They know they are not all that God has called them to be. And inside, personally, they feel like failures before God. Everybody say 90%. 90%. I, I don't make up the statistics. I, I just, I'm just the messenger, okay? So don't get mad at me. So I believe that instead of according, living to, according to a vision, most of us are living according to a revision. A revision is looking back at something you've already done, looking back at the past. So if you're living a revision, you are living something you've already done. Have you ever heard the phrase in life, why are you doing it that way? And the answer and the response is, because that's always the way we've done it. If you work anywhere in corporate America, you will always hear that phrase from your boss or his boss, because that's always the way we've done it. And while we were doing that, the Japanese were making 10 times better. Oh, okay, I'll get off that deal. So a revision is really living the past again. And the majority of believers, I actually believe, are living in the past because they're so preoccupied with revision, they don't live their vision. And so I'm preoccupied with everything that I've messed up in the past and everything that's wrong in the past. I can't step into my future. Eagle, hey, you get out of the cave. God. This is not God's plan for you. This is not God's best for you, Elijah. You are God's man of faith and power for the hour. Get out of this cave and let's go commence the rest of your ministry. Let's go commence your future tomorrow and next week and the following week. And God said, I've taken care of Jezebel and all her henchmen in this promise of who you've anointed. Woo, hallelujah. And I want to tell you something. If you anoint your future, it might derail your enemies. Hallelujah. Yeah. So I believe the majority of believers are actually living their past. Because they're so occupied with their vision, they don't live their vision. Solomon says, without a vision, you will perish. Everybody say, you, you will perish. Yeah. You will die on the vine, brothers and sisters. And I believe most Christians are living their revision. And let me break that down. Let, let me break my belief. Most Christians are living their revision. Can I break it down? Do you talk more to your past than you do your future? Are you having conversation with people that are not even in the room? Okay, are you having conversations with people that have hurt you? With people that you want to give them your mind? You ever want to give somebody your, just let them have it, give them your mind? Anybody ever work in corporate America? Have you ever had a boss that you just wanted to give him a piece of your mind? Oh, where do you work? <laughs> 
Solomon says, you've got to get a vision, and the vision is always about future. The vision is about seeing forward. And I believe that some people are so busy remembering that they cannot forget. And Elijah's sitting in a cave remembering, rehearsing the words of Jezebel. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to kill you. And as he's rehearsing those words, her word said, I will kill you in one day. Well, he's rehearsing those words. It's 52 days later. Are you rehearsing a pain that God has already moved on from and taken care of the problem? So I think that sometimes we remember so hard we'll never forget. We're so busy remembering we can't forget. And I need you to think about that for your life. What is it in your life you need to let go of? That God already has a plan for what's next. There is a God-given dream in your heart, I promise you that, and it's much bigger than the pain in your heart. Most people are so trapped by what they, are, what they used to do, they have no energy to do what they should do or could do. Many are so afraid of their past failures and hurts that they never attempt future possibility. Elijah... Are you going to end the ministry and the anointing God has for you in this cave? Elijah, is this where you're going to stop and drop here in this cave? There's people to anoint. There's situations to anoint. There's kings to anoint. There's a prophet to anoint. Elijah, are you going to let it end right here in this cave? God is asking that. What are you doing here? God will ask us that question. It seems as if people are so busy keeping in touch with their past, they never visit their future. Most of us live our lives based on what we did. Have you ever thought about doing something new and you realized, well, when I think about it, what I did was so hard, I don't want to do that again. But in what you had done, God had blessed you mightily, and you say, I don't want to do it again. And maybe you can throw age in there, maybe you can throw problems in there, maybe you can throw regulations there. But the reality is most of us base our future on what happened in the past and the things that we've gone through in the past. Elijah, I tell you what, I understand the threat is real with, with Jezebel. I get it. But do you know your God is bigger than Jezebel and the woman and the words she spoke against you? You know that, Elijah. Wake up. So the unknown is usually lived out of the known, and, and that's really how we base our future, is on our past. It's dangerous to do that because what you know should not limit you from what you could know. What you know should not limit you from what you could know. And I'm just going to put it this way, memory immobilizes man. Memory immobilizes, memory immobilizes dreams, it immobilizes vision, it immobilizes progress. Say it with me, memory immobilizes man. Memory immobilizes man. I have seen people that are in the church and been in the church all their life, and they were living and dealing with things that happened 40 and 50 years ago. And the reason I know that is because when I got alone with them and I sat down and had coffee with them, and they begin to tell me all of their issues in their past and their grandma and their granddad and their great granddad. And I'm like, my God, you've got to let that memory go so you can move into your future. You've got to let it go. Say, I got to let it go. Most people are trapped by their memories. And my question to you is the same question God asked Elijah. Are you going to be trapped by Jezebel's words for the rest of your life? Are you going to run from the promise of God for the rest of your life? I believe that it's a trap Satan uses to keep us from living God's future. I really believe that memory is what Satan uses to keep us from living God's future for our lives. To many people, their past has more power than God's plans. So the enemy gets us so occupied. He gets us occupied with what's happened, what's been we never plan to do what we could do. Whether you believe it or not, rehearsing your past is planning your future. Write that down. What you're complaining and whining about, rehearsing your past, whether you like it or not, is planning your future. Elijah, I want you to quit thinking about Jezebel. I want you to quit thinking about the prophets. I want you to quit thinking about her assassins. I've got you in my hand. I've told you to anoint your future. Now get out of this cave and let's go see the power of God work against your enemies and bring the anointing of Elisha to the earth and let's get out of this cave. Brothers and sisters, it's time to get out of the cave and anoint our futures. I promise you, you cannot anoint your future from the cave. 
God said, you get out. He said, I want you to go anoint two men. You're going to have to go touch them, lay hands on them, and put oil on them. You're going to have to go find Elisha. I'll show you where he lives. I've got his address. It's, it's in my garment. He said, I will get you to his house, and I want you to anoint this man of God. Yes. You cannot anoint your future from a cave. So the past is a dangerous place to live. Elijah, is this where it ends for you? Right here in this cave? And God gives us the capacity to forget the past. God gives us the capacity, most people don't believe that, but God gives us the capacity to forget the past. I know people have a hard time with that one. This is what I hear constantly. Well, Pastor Steve, I have forgiven them, but I will not forget it. You ever heard that from, from born again believers? I'm going to tell you right now, that's not scriptural. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not scriptural. I praise God he does not forgive me in that manner. I praise God that he does not forgive me in that manner. I forgive you, Stephen, but I'm going to give you scripture for that. Okay, how about that? God gives us the capacity to forget the past so that we can move on into the future. And I must confess, it's impossible not to have a memory. I understand that. But it is possible to not allow your memory to immobilize you. It is possible by the Holy Spirit. I'll forgive you, but I won't forgive you. I, when I hear that, I honestly can tell you, I know where you're at spiritually. Two heads shaking on that. Everybody else is like, oh my God. Yeah, when you tell me I will forgive people, but I will not forget. I know where you're at spiritually. And let, let me just let you in on a secret. When you make that confession, you let people know, you let God know, and you let the enemy know. Yes. Amen. Woo! Don't make that confession ever. The enemy is listening. But God has made it possible that our memories will not immobilize us and destroy us. It's not in God's character to be angry and not forget. In fact, one of the greatest men in the Bible teaches us something about forgiveness. And, and forgiveness was so powerful, and forgetting was so powerful, he named his first son. He named his first son. Let me read this in Genesis. This is what he named his first son. I love this. Joseph called the name of his firstborn Manasseh, for he said, God hath made me forget all my pain and toil and all my father's house. He said, God has taken away and removed the memory and the pain and the toil of all that went on before me. And he said, now I'm free to move forward in Egypt and be the governor of Egypt and lead a nation that is going to be established in Egypt. And its name is going to be Israel. And they are going to one day have a savior named Jesus Christ. It was Joseph who said, I'm forgetting the past and moving on the former things and I'm going to the future things of what God has. In fact, he said, I'm going to, I'm going to literally, I'm going to just make this so powerful in my life. I'm going to name my first time, my first son Manasseh. So every time he called Manasseh, he said, I've forgotten all of the pain. I've forgotten all the pain. Manasseh, come here. I forgot all my pain and toil. I forgot the pain in my foot. Every time I call my son, I'm going to remember, I forgot all of the stuff the enemy brought against me. Yes. Woo! How, how mighty is that? That every time I call my son, it's going to remind me I have forgot all my pain. And he says, God has made me forget. Say with me, God has made me forget. Read it. It's in Genesis. It's just in Genesis 41. Don't tell me you can't forget. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you can forget. And I praise God he forgot. I praise God he forgot that. Because God had a plan to bring those boys down, those brothers that put him in prison and sold him into slavery. And I, I just praise God he wasn't still mad and wasn't still angry. And then killed some guy named Judah. And we would not have had the lion of the tribe of Judah. Because Joseph couldn't forget. And he was still so mad at Judah that he had him killed. He could have done that. But he said, God has made me forget. Woo! I love that. And in the second son, he said, his name's Ephraim. And he says, God has blessed me in the land of my affliction. He said, God has blessed me so much, I can't even remember what those jokers did to me. God has blessed me so great in Israel, he has given me such a blessing. I can't even, in Egypt, I can't even remember what happened down there. And by the way, he gave me uh, the wife, uh, Potiphar's wife, uh, wife, that woman, that Egyptian woman. And the Bible said she was beautiful and she was lovely. And he said, she's better looking than any of those women up in Canaan. God must really love me. Look what he's done for me. <laughs> Read it. It talks about her beauty. And he said, God has made me forget. Brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, forgetting is spiritual. Forgetting is something the church needs to learn. 
It is something the church needs to learn. My God, it's godly. Let's see, I wonder if Jesus ever did that. Joseph said, I won't allow my memory to immobilize my future. See, in God, we can actually leave and cancel the emotional pain and death of the psychological issue and ties from the past. God said, I've made that available. Do you know why most people go to psychologists and psychoanalysis? Their past, not their future. I guarantee you, when you go to a psychologist or psychoanalysis, I guarantee you, you're never talking about your future. All you're doing is talking about your past. And the only thing they can do with your past is give you a pill and anesthetize your past and hope that those pills will work long enough and have you keep coming for years and years and years and years and years because you never forget your past. You just come and talk about it. And that's how they make millions. God says, I'm going to help you forget your past. I've got a pill. It's called the Word of God and the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I've got a pill for your past. So the question is, Elijah, what are you doing here? Forget it and move on. Forget it and move on. I, I'm doing something new. God can cancel that emotional pain. I'll tell you, I've seen it. So if you're willing to forget, you can advance to the future God has for you. To live effectively. I, I believe it is impossible for you to succeed until your future becomes more important than your past. Yes. I believe that 100% as a believer. To live effectively. I believe you, it is impossible for you to go forward until you... Get rid of the problems of your past. You must move on past your past to enter into your future. Elijah, let's get the past is over. It's done. It is what it is. I want you to trust me. Get up out of this cave. I've given you a word. And by the way, you're 7,001. Say, I'm 7,001. The next time you tell God you're the only one, be careful. He might give you a number. Can you imagine that? If I was Elijah and I had told God after this diatribe of everything he told God, I, 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 and God says, oh, by the way, you're 7,001. I, I would have got on my knees, Lord. Forget. How dare you be so insolent before the living God of Israel? I'm the only one. I got news for you. You're not the only one. And there are more Christians in America praying to God, believing for God, standing for God, standing for this nation, praying for this nation than you can believe. Why don't you join them? Why don't you can join them? Every one of us have been trapped in one way or another by things that have been done to us, said about us. And it stops us from being what we could do. Do you know one of the greatest attributes of our God? I, I truly believe this. One of the greatest attributes of God is that He forgets. He forgets. Scripture makes it very plain that He forgets. Say, I praise God. He has forgot. My past. My past. And he planned that before you even had a future. I praise God he's not holding on to what Stephen did 20 years ago. I praise God. I know none of you have any issues, so, so I'll just praise God for you. I think the fact that God forgets. Scripture makes it very clear. Isaiah 43, 25. I am he who blots out your transgression. Forgive. And God gives you a secret. He says, I do it for my sake. Woo he said, I do it for my sake. I forgive you and I forget for me so that when I look at you, I can always be pleased with you and loving and kind and merciful to you. And I have nothing of angst in my heart towards you because I've forgiven you and I have forgotten. Hallelujah. That's the God I want to serve. He can't even remember my screw up 10 years ago. You can, the devil can, and so can all your friends, but God doesn't. Hallelujah, that is an amen. God's not up there. Yeah, I remember that 10 years ago, Steve. You ever come to God in prayer? And I'm thinking, I wonder if he wonders, well, 10 years ago, dude, uh, you know, we've got to talk about that. No, it's under the blood. It's washed. It's removed by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews 8, 12, for I will be merciful toward their iniquities, and I will remember their sin. God said, I'm going to forget your sin. God said, your, your sin's not even worth messing with. My blood is so powerful, it's removed it. God said, I'm not digging up something down that's at the bottom of the ocean. That's right. Only those guys looking for Titanic are down there. When they got down there, they found a whole bunch of sin down there. That's what they found. <laughs> God said, I, I, I have the ability to forget. I have the ability to forgive and forget. That's powerful. God is not rehearsing your past. So why are you? Isaiah, excuse me, where, where am I getting this today? 
You go, Hijah, why are you rehearsing your past? I've come here with a word for your future. I've come here with a word that is going to be an assurance that God is going to deal with all your enemies. Wow. God is more interested in who we can be than who we are. Than who we were. God is more interested in who we can be. Revelation 13, 8 says, The Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. Brothers, this has always been God's plan. To forgive and forget. Yes. Not just forgive. It's always been God's plan to forgive and forget. Do you know how much happier your marriages would be if you would forgive and forget? Amen. Don't look at each other. Do you know how much happier you would be if you could learn to forgive? There are people that are married to somebody that the new person they're married to, they're still literally secretly living with their old person in their anger and hatred and bitterness towards their previous ex. God says, forgive and forget and move on. That's right. That's right. I serve a God who can not only forgive, but he can forget. So every time I come into his presence in prayer and in worship, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. Do you know what that means in the Hebrew? The Lord smile upon you. So when I come to him as his child, the Bible says because he has forgiven and forgotten, when I come in, he's smiling at me. He's smiling. That's his word. That's not my word. I'm just, somebody say amen. When you come to God's presence, he's smiling. There's my son, Stephen. A bunch of Christians are over here, but don't you know what he, and God's like, get out of here. My blood is washed it clean. I tell you, people can remember your sin long past God. He takes our sin, our past, and he blots it out and he forgets it. That is something people forget about our God. He not only forgives, he forgets. I love that scripture. I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. So that I can smile at you. And I will not remember your sins anymore. If I was in a group of coyotes, they would howl right there over glory to God. Thank you. Got a wolf pack in here? God made arrangements to deal with your past. Because he loved your future so much. God took the curse of my past so it would not curse my future. God has some things that he wants you to do. That he won't allow what you did to destroy what he wants you to do. There you, go. There you, go. Awesome. Mm. you need to give that to your kids same day. I praise God for that. God is so interested in what he has next. Do you know when you ask God for forgiveness, you're cashing in on something that's already done? Do you know you're cashing in on something? Redemption means purchase. Redemption means purchase. Say purchase. purchase. So when you ask God in your redemption, not only when you're born again, but if you sin again, any man says he has no sin, he's a liar. So when we sin, we run to God, we get it and we confess it, we get it in the blood, and you're cashing in on the redemption God has made available to you. And he says, you brought it to me, it's been paid for, it's off the books, and now there's no charge on you. Hallelujah! Amen. He got me out of a pawn shop. Amen. Praise God. God always has a plan for every man to be successful. Therefore, if we fail, I honestly believe it is intentional on our part. We have not decided to succeed in God. I believe that God hates to see us fail. And I believe that God has made arrangements that we will prosper and be in health. So anything that happens in our life, brothers and sisters, we need to understand that it is a temporary situation through the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That we can confess it to the Lord, get it under the blood, get remission and removal, and God show up and say, all right, get up, let's go. I love that promise from God. I love that promise from God. Forgiveness is not something God just decided to do. Forgiveness is something God intended to do. Because he had a plan for your life. Forgetting is not something God just decided to do. It's something he intended to do. I want you to think right now about something that has hurt your spirit. Today I'm going to ask you to let it go. 
Because I know none of you would stand before God and tell him, don't you know how good I am, God? Don't you know? But I'm going to ask God to remove those, that thing or those things that... Because everybody says, well, Pastor Steve, you minister on this a lot. And I'm like, well, yeah. Because people have this issue. You know, Jesus said offense will come. He didn't say it might come. He said it will come. Everybody say it will come. And the enemy will make sure it comes. I promise you. He'll make sure it comes. He, just as God has made arrangements for your future, the enemy tries to arrange situations for our failure. So that's why I love the word forget. Tell your neighbor, forget it. Look at him and tell him, forget it. Wives, look at your husbands, tell them, forget it. Husbands, look at your wives and tell her, forget it. Tell them, forget it. God has something better. Tell them, forget it. God has something better. Elijah, forget it. God has something better. You cannot anoint your future sitting in a cave, angry and bitter and hateful and mad at God, mad at the world, and think God's going to change anything or anything's going to change in my life. Say with me, I will go anoint my future. I will go anoint my future. I love what God tells him. He just walks right past his complaint and says, get up, get a curse of oil, and I want you to go anoint two kings and one prophet. And the men that he anointed saved his life. The very men he anointed took care of Jezebel and all her henchmen. Woo! That's a hallelujah! The enemy that you see today, you shall not see again. Hallelujah. Wow. But what if he had stayed in that cave? Scripture tells us, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. God said, the only way to do a new thing is if you'll forget the former things. God says, I cannot have you drag your past into my anointed future. It will kill your anointed future. Listen, Elijah, you're not dragging Jezebel into the anointing that I'm going to have you place on these three men. Amen. I will not let you let Jezebel mess that up. Right. Let her go. I've taken care of it. Right. Let's get up and go. So Isaiah tells us, forget the former things. Say, forget the former things. Forget the former things. I sometimes wish that our minds were like the Etch-A-Sketch we all grew up with, that you could just go like that. The, pro the reality is God has given us one. He's called the Holy Spirit. The reality is God has given us the power to forget. Oh, I know, I for I know you're forgiven. Him. I, I know that. But it's godly to forgive, but it's also godly to forget. God has forgotten your transgressions. As we move forward in the insanity of what's going on out there, I am not dragging anything from my past into God's future for my life. The Apostle Paul says, brothers and sisters, I don't consider myself yet to have, to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do. Everybody say, one thing. one thing. If you do one thing this week, I want you to be forgetting what is behind. And straining toward what is ahead. That's the Apostle Paul. That's what he says. He read the book of, of, of Kings. He knew what Elijah went through. And Paul had been through hell and high water. And he said, I'm going to forget all of that stuff. And I'm going to move forward. Hey, say with me, I'm going to forget the former things. That's what Paul said. I'm just, re I'm just bringing the message. Forgetting what is behind. And this is what I love. Straining. And here's the problem. If you're straining for the past and straining for the future, it'll rip you in two. It'll tear you apart. You've got to let go of something. You've got to let go of something. Amen? You've got to let go of something. If I'm going to let go of anything, <laughs> straining for what God has. I'm going to let go of that and put both hands onto what God has. Elijah, forget the past. I've handled it. I've, your anointing is going to destroy those that have come against you. Elijah, you're not hiding from your past. You're hiding from your future. And that's what he was doing. God said, man, I, I know who you are. I know you're my man. I know you've been through situations. I know what Jezebel has said. God said, I, I have it handled. I have it handled. Say with me, he has it handled. He has it handled. I can let it go. 
forgetting the former things, forgetting what is behind, and straining to what God has. My sermon today is go anoint your future. But don't drag your past into the anointing on your future. It will destroy it. If you receive it, say amen. amen. Stand up for the blessing. I, I really tell people that this is something you need to speak in your life every day over your house and your household. I speak it every day over my house, my household, my wife, my kids. I speak it over you. But this is something that God has given you to anoint your house with also, your life with also. So when things come against you, just pray this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the Lord told Israel, if you'll put my name on your children, I will seek them. If you agree, say amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, you are dismissed in the name of the Lord. Hello, one and all. We have been receiving questions regarding where to send tithes and offerings. If you'd like to mail it in, you can do so at P.O. Box 2223, Sholo, Arizona, 85902. And please, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, share, and subscribe. While you're at it, like us on Facebook. Link is in the description. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Link is also in the description. Helps out us, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that this is a format you wish to see continue. And with that, we wish you a blessed week.